Writing lesson plans can sometimes be a long and arduous task. If you are like me, you have to write your lesson plans in multiple formats, one for your administrators, one for your students, and one that you actually use and follow. Then if you plan on submitting your lesson plan to a national board or a state board, they may require a different format altogether. Though it may sound daunting to create lesson plans for all your audiences, it can be made simple using Google Docs. I like to create a simple form to enter my lesson plans into a spreadsheet, and then I use the spreadsheet in a mail merge program to set up the layout for my administrators, for my students, for myself, or for wherever I desire to submit my lesson plan. If you are a teacher, this is a great way to store your lessons, but not have to redesign them when you move schools or new policies come in or new formats are required. If you are a tech leader, this is an excellent way to set up a template for all your teachers to use and create the same design for their lesson plans. Make it easier on them and they'll enjoy making the lesson plans for you. First of all, you need to sign into your Gmail account. Uh, from, the, from your email page, click up on the Documents tab up at the top and this is going to take you where you can create new documents. What I want to do first is create a simple form that can be filled in and populated with data about what my lesson plans are. So I'm going to click down on Create New. I'm going to go down to Form. And I want to give this form a title. And I'm going to call it Lesson Plan Generator. It just seems to sound better when you put generator on there. It makes it sound easier. And so I'm going to type in here some information I want to include. I'm going to, uh, let's say that I'm creating this for multiple teachers and I want everyone to enter their information into this uh, web form so that we can have all the information in one spreadsheet. So I'm going to give information to the teachers as to what they need to do. Please fill out this form with the lesson plans. Now when I create a new form, I have two sample questions. I can either delete these questions by clicking on the garbage can or I can edit these questions and make them uh, what I want. Now before you start sitting down to create a form, I recommend pre-planning. What I like to do is write out what questions I'm going to use and uh, even what type of questions they're going to be. In this case, I simply included a couple of questions that I could use. But in lesson plans, think about things that you may need to include, such as the unit's title, the lesson's title, learning objectives, standards, local standards, state standards, national standards, maybe what materials need to be used, what opening activities, et cetera, et cetera. There's lists and lists out there of what you can put on your lesson plans. So I'm going to use a couple of these questions here to help me guide my form in setting it up for, for uh, writing my lesson plans and for collecting the information. Let me move this off to the side. I'm going to start off with a question by the teacher's name. Uh, that way I can know which teacher is putting in the lesson. So I'm going to just put in here, I'm actually going to create a drop-down list. If you come to question type and you click on this drop-down arrow, we can choose, choose from a list, and I'm going to go ahead and put in a couple of teachers. And even an administrator. So you can see here, what's going to happen is there's going to be a drop-down list and the teacher will be able to choose their name or the administrator. That way we know who is creating the lesson plan. I'm going to put some help text in here. Once I'm finished with that question, I can go ahead and make it a required question. If I click done, you can see it shows me what it'll look like. I can go through and see what it will look like when I actually have the, the form set up. I'm going to add a new question now. And this time I want to have a question for, I'm just going to have a text question, which means they can write in an answer. And I'm going to type in here, what is the lesson plan title? And the help text, I'm just going to type in, please write your lesson's title. This will allow them to write in the title of what their lesson is. And I can click this to make it a required question. That means they'll have to answer it. You do have the option of leaving this blank if some of the information maybe is optional or maybe isn't necessary uh, for everyone. You may leave that as optional. I'm going to make it as a required question. This time, instead of clicking done, I'm going to go ahead and add in a new uh, question. This time I'm going to choose learning objectives. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to choose text again and then I'm going to write in what are your learning objectives. And I can change this 
to text, I'm going to make it a paragraph. Maybe they, I want to give them a little bit more space to write what objectives they would like to get done uh, with this lesson plan. I'm going to go ahead and make that one a required question as well. Now, I'm not going to go through all of the different questions, each one individually, but I want to show you a couple of things that you can do that will make things a lot easier. I'm going to go ahead and go to local standards and show you how you can put in the standards and have your teachers select the standards uh, that they're going to use. So let me just go ahead and do that now. For the standards, I'm going to create a drop-down list again, and I'm going to choose choose from a list. I could also do, do a multiple choice question, which would allow me to have multiple choice that they could choose which one they're going to do. But for this one, I'm going to put in here a question, what state standards now oftentimes lessons may apply to multiple standards so I'm gonna put in here this is going to be the first choice or most important or the primary standard that the lesson accomplishes and I'm gonna type in the help text choose the most appropriate standard. Then I can choose I can create a list of what the standards are. And for time's sake, I'm just going to put in short standards. Let's say I do science 1A, science 1B. If I were designing this though for multiple teachers, I would put in what it actually is, what the standard is, so that they can look right here in the form and choose what the standard is without having to check out a different document. So let me put in a couple more. So you're getting the idea of how you can put in everything that somebody can choose for their standards. Now I'm going to use this as the primary response or the most important standard that they're using. I'm going to make it a required question because I want that information there. Now I want them to have the option of having two different standards applied to the lesson. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this question by clicking on this icon here it duplicates it and you can see here's the question I created previously and here's the one that I'm creating now so what I'm gonna do now is change this to what is the most in, second most important and I'm gonna just type in here secondary that way the teachers know this is the secondary standard that they would use so I'm going to just change this a little bit. And I'm going to keep the list the same because it's going to be the same standards. Now I could go through and I could set this up for the local standards, the state standards, national standards. I could put in materials. Maybe I have check boxes for materials that I use. That way the teacher knows what to check out. Or we can uh, communicate with the media center to indicate what materials need to be uh, ready and prepared. Uh, let me just show you how to create a check box real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and add items, and I'm going to go down to check boxes, and I'm going to put in here materials. So please choose the materials that you need. I'm going to leave it at check boxes, and I'm going to put in a couple of options here. So this way the teacher can check whatever they need for that lesson. Now I can make that a required question or leave it optional. I'm going to leave it optional by not choosing make required. So now I've put in a couple of questions into this form. I'm not going to put in all of the questions. I'm going to move on to the next step. And the next step is to actually experiment filling in the form, make sure that it works. So I'm going to click here and you can see here's my lesson plan generator. I can email this out to various teachers or I could fill this out myself if I'm doing it for all of my lessons. So the first one, what is your name? And I'm going to say I'm teacher three, lesson plan title, measurements, and then my objectives. I can write those in. I can come down here and I'm going to look and notice, well this applies to science 1C as well as math 2. So now I have my standard set up there, and the materials that I will need is simply an overhead. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Submit, 
Now, once I do this, it says, thanks, your responses have been recorded. You can then instruct your, your teachers, whoever, to hit go back to the form, and they can do it again. So this time I'm going to be an administrator, and I'm going to give a, a new lesson. And I'm going to call this one Units and Measurements. And I'm just going to put in the same information. And now, if you have multiple teachers doing this, all inputting in their lesson plans, it takes just a few seconds for them to put in the lesson plans that they have used, uh, maybe for years and they just need to put in a format, or maybe they have a pile of lesson plans that they want to put in. This is a simple way to put all your lessons in one location. I'm going to go ahead and hit Submit. Now, I can go back and keep creating more and more information or more and more data about my lesson plans. But I'm going to click on the Edit Form. Now, if you notice, when I previewed it, it actually opened up a new tab. That way I can go back to my form and I can edit and change if something wasn't right. I can also go back to the, the form itself and try it out. I'm going to be on the tab right now that's editing and I'm going to see some of the other things I can do. For example, I can edit confirmation. Instead of it saying, your responses have been recorded, I want it to say, your responses have been recorded. Please complete all your lesson plans until they are all finished. And then I can go ahead and click Save, or I could put whatever other response I have in there uh, to let the person know that their response has been recorded. I'm going to go ahead and hit Save. And now, when I go back to the lesson plan generator and I create a new lesson, Now you can also put in, uh, notice how I have all of my standards. I should probably have a spot here that says done or not applicable or something else. That way, if they don't have a secondary standard for the lesson, they aren't stuck giving it another one. So that's something I can see here that I need to go back and edit. Or they could choose the same one. For right now, I'm going to choose the same one. And then I'm going to submit this. And you can see my response has changed so they now know they can go back and do more. So you can do lots of different things. You can email responses. You can, if this is set up through uh, Google Apps through your school, you can actually set it so that they have to have an email address uh, from your school to submit responses to the form or to edit it. Once you've gone through and you've had everybody fill in all of the information and you've collected a lot of data, you can go into your Google Docs. I have starred my lesson plan generator so you can see it right here. Now, to access the data, there's a Google spreadsheet that you can view all the data that the, that the teachers have entered. If I click on this, I can view the data. I can see all the information. And now here's the great thing, is I can download this into an Excel spreadsheet or download it just as a spreadsheet and use it with a program that merges documents, such as Word, to mail merge this and create PDFs of all of the lesson plans. Now this is an excellent way to save time in creating, P uh, creating lesson plans and to also make sure that everybody's on the same boat with the same design. Uh, by having everybody use the simple form, you can get all of the data, all of the information, but then you can merge it and make it look how you want, whether you're an administrator, or you're a teacher, or maybe you're submitting it to somewhere for review, you can put it in the format that is needed, but you don't have to retype, replan, redo everything. All you have to do is access this simple document that you have here. Now what you can do is just go up to File, Download As, and it gives you multiple options of what you can download this as. So hopefully this quick tutorial has helped you in seeing how you can make lesson plans uh, an easy task to write multiple formats for the lessons that you've already created, or an easy way to get all your teachers on board with the same format.